Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Recollection Step, a Grand Archive TCG podcast, part of the Main Deck podcast family. I'm Dan. And I'm Taylor. And today we have a very special guest with us, uh, friend of the channel, fellow Main Deck member, former kitchen manager, (laughs) Ascent Houston Day 2 bubbler, any Nationals Day 2 participator, uh, Ascent... Uh, 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 excuse me, fellow Ascent World champion, there you and go. also Ascent Chicago runner-up, runner-up, runner Mitchell up. Janwick. <laughs> How are you doing, Mitch? Oh, we're doing great. How are you guys doing today? Oh, fantastic. Doing good. Very mm-hmm. excited to have you on the channel today with us, Mitch. Uh, well deserved after a third place in Ascent Chicago, which was extremely impressive. We were all very, very proud of you, of course, as we were. When you guys took Ascent Worlds as well, super, <laughs> super exciting. But um, that's two Ascent Top Cuts under your belt, Mitch. And uh, really appreciate you coming on today to join Taylor and mostly not me because I wasn't there in our recap of Ascent yeah. Chicago. That was that was weird, Dan. I didn't I didn't see you in Chicago at all. I, I thought you were going to be there. I was really <laughs> this this like. If there was any tournament you were going to spike, it was probably going to be this tournament. So what, yeah. what happened there? Well, I'm saving it for Singapore, first of all. Oh, oh smart, okay. smart, smart. So, you know, yep. uh, it was Gen Con weekend. Yeah. Mm, so yep. I was I was doing other things, unfortunately. Um, but we have you two. That's why you're here. So welcome, everyone, to episode number two. Three million of the slime cast. It's, it's <laughs> always go. the slime cast here on Recollection Step. And Ascent Chicago, if any Ascent is going to be the slime cast episode, it's Ascent Chicago. <laughs> um, Slimes everywhere. Oh my so God. I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do for this one, you two, is I'm going to step back a little bit. I'm going to let Taylor take control for a little while. I know you guys like that out there when we do that. And uh, Mitch is going to be number two. And you guys can go ahead and just, I want to hear. Let's talk about Ascent Chicago. What happened? Um, Before we get into that, Dan, let's get this out of the way right away. Because I think we're just going to dive into it. But why don't you please inform the listeners and viewers uh, how they can help support the channel? Well, Taylor, if you insist, I will do do that for you. Thank you. Uh, Listeners, if you are ready to enjoy another episode of Recollection Step, you're sitting out there. It's about to start. You can't wait. And I am making it take longer. You can uh, go ahead and show your appreciation by leaving a like on the video, commenting on the video, sharing it with your friends, subscribing to the channel. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, a five star review, always very, very helpful. So thank you for supporting us in those ways. And if you need to support us further, if you want to support us further or you need to, you're compelled to TCG player. We have an affiliate link on that lovely website that you're so familiar with. Purchase your single cards using our affiliate link, which is linked down in the description, or bit.ly slash shop TCGs. That's bit.ly slash shop TCGs. We get a little kickback. You get your cards cheap. Win-win situation. So that's maybe the most I'm going to talk here. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's go. Let's hear yeah. about it. I said Chicago. All right. Well, so first of all, Mitch, again, congratulations on your third place finish. Uh, that's fantastic. And we're all very, very excited for you. Um. We we kind of started this off with our normal, it's become normal at this point, our normal Ascent big event tradition where we, we all kind of compile, we get we get all the main deck homies uh, in the same area, and we start uh, trying to test some games together. Uh, it was a little different this time where uh, we didn't arrive uh, quite so early. We were only able to arrive on Friday instead of Thursday. But mostly, I mean, it was fine because Mitch, uh, you've, you've been on Sylvie for quite a while now. I think you've had your deck picked out for this event for probably at least a month at least a month um yeah um ever since we saw the new sylvie i've been on the sylvie hype train right there with dan um i'm all about the slimes all about the sylvie Was playing sylvie before she got the new deck so it was nice to see her finally have some good cards for a change <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, as um as Sylvie's number one hater, this has been a, a tough <laughs> format for me to kind of like, you know, endure. And uh, man, I I gave it my best here um this weekend, but I was only able to to take 14th, and I only took one slimes player down with me. I managed to draw with two of them, which was nice, but I also lost to one. So it's pretty pretty even against the slime menace here. But I'm I'm keeping up the good fight for for everybody else who's who's out there in my boat with me. So, um, but yeah, you 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 had a great you've you've been working on Sylvie since since the recollection deck came out beforehand even, but slime specifically you've been working on for a very long time. Uh, so it's great to see your preparation and practice get rewarded here. Um, let's see. We've also had some really good results from the rest of the main deck team. Uh, someone like myself was in four. I got 14th place. Um, we had, uh, unfortunately that we were the only two to make it to day two, but Jordan took fourth in the scrubbed out of steel event, uh, which was quite large. Um, I think it was like 120 players. Um, so, I mean, that was a really sizable tournament. And then on top of that, this was also like the largest ascent so far. Uh, with 282 players in attendance. Um, so it was just like a huge tournament in, in general. And then uh, one other one other shout out is uh, local Tony, who, uh, you know, tests with the main deck. He's part of main deck. And he started out, unfortunately, one and, one and three. He took his third loss in the fourth round going into lunch. And then he just grinded it out the rest of the day, regardless, even though he was dead from top two or top, top 32. He went and just won five in a row to end the day six and three with a really really strong record uh so the the mental fortitude to to go from one three to six three is just fantastic i wanted to shout him out as well before we get too far into the podcast here what deck was tony on he was on fire merlin i was also on fire merlin i think what a grinder i love that Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of the team was actually on either fire merlin or sylvie um i think we had a couple players on fire lorraine as well and then I think that was mostly it. Uh, Jordan was on the fire Xander. Uh, Jordan, yeah, yeah, Jordan was on fire Xander instead of fire Lorraine. So yeah, he's been uh, playing that a lot. Um, it was it was kind of a weird event though, because like other than Mitch, nobody else really had a, a deck picked out or just like one hundred percent decided on before the event. Um, even like that Friday before, we were all talking about a bunch of different ways. Um, Corbin is sitting here. He's trying to tell us that Nico is the best deck in the format. Um, <laughs> and if it wasn't for Sylvie, like he he has a pretty strong argument, actually. Yeah. I'd say like Nico, Nico has been good. doing really really well. Um, so sitting here considering that, I mean Tristan obviously is ubiquitous at this point as well. Uh, she's a lot of fun to play. You just draw all of the cards and then get all the prep counters and then kill people. So uh, and then of course like allies um, is always always around as well. Um, so I mean we just had so many options going into the to the event. And eventually we just went with like Merlin's cool. So um, <laughs> I think that's always a solid fallback. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, if, uh, if I could go back in time, I tell myself I would play slimes for this event, but there's no way I could never Not do that. A chance. No. I didn't think you ever, you told me at one point, like, ah, oh, I think I have to play slimes. And then I, before our store champs, I took two copies of bestial frenzy from you you were thinking about playing it that day at Store Champs, but because I took your uh, I, because I took your bestials, then you decided that was enough of an excuse to not have to play it. <laughs> and I think that locked you out of slimes at that point when you weren't playing in the Store Champs either. Like you were you were not going to do it. Yep. Yeah, I had played it at a local. I had played it at locals the night before and, and uh, three old locals there with it, so that was cool. But like, I mean, it just felt dirty, you know. I, <laughs> I can't I can't it do feels good. myself. I can't be, it feels so good. Come on. <laughs> it's just it's not slimes. true to it's not true to me, unfortunately. Just rub some slimes on you, bro. It's good. It feels oh. great. I mean, the <laughs> slimes uh, if it was just slime if I could slot the slimes into a different champion's deck, I'd be about it. it sounds great. Um it's you just, can. Nah, okay. You can, but you can't do it very successfully, unfortunately. <laughs> you can't they don't do much, but no. you can put them in. They sure don't. Um but yeah, Mitch, why don't you why don't you walk us through kind of uh, uh, your your gauntlet here uh, from day one and day two into top eight, and kind of walk us through some of your maybe your tougher matchups, your tougher opponents, and uh, just let us know about your experience here. Yeah, um, so let's go through that. Um, I probably think the hardest fought one that I had was probably against Bailey on uh, his uh, mm. Water and Solar Rain. 
just uh, a great back and forth. It went down to game three. We were in time before I was able to finish it out for the win instead of the draw. Um, um, it's really cool to see him have this much success with this list as well because he's played it at a, a couple of recent regionals as well and, and placed in those regionals. Um, and then obviously, this is a very unique list, something he's been brewing up um, out there in California. And uh, cool. so it's it's awesome to kind of see see some players still be rewarded for ingenuity, especially in the face of a meta game that appears to be um, very consolidated right now. Bayleaf too with the the ninth place, the bubble out, uh, the, bubble. I, the bubble. I can sympathize with that greatly. Sorry, Bailey, you did you did great. You had a sweet deck, but ninth place happens sometimes. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I had this wonderful game against uh, the Christian on Nico. That was one of the last rounds for day one to get into day two. Yeah. A great, great player, real tight on his play. It's just, it's so hard in that matchup for Nico to get any kind of ground against Sylvie. But he had this really cool plan where he would side out of his serene spirit of water and just regular water spirit. Um, reason why I think he was doing is so we can just turn one, icebound slam on the draw, smack you for eight. It's like all right, next turn, no one coming through. Yep, yeah, I um, I really like that play from Nico, in, in order just to try and get some ground to that matchup, like that's that's kind of how they win that one. Otherwise, you just get overpowered by by slimes once Sylvie gets to level three. Um, yeah, I mean it was that was a long day one as well. Um, oh. Started a little late, unfortunately, because of a little mishap with registration and stuff. And so we got going a little late. And then uh, that ate into the lunch break a little bit, too. So we had a pretty short lunch break. Um, a little tough to get food in time. Um, so it just ended up being a really long day, especially because I think every other ascent until now, um, at least non-team event, has been eight rounds. Day one, this ended up being nine rounds. Um, so you really just had to fight fight through a lot of really good competition uh in order to to make day two here and then uh we were rewarded with our our hard-fought efforts including um some win and ends that we had to play on the end of day one with being paired into each other uh for the very first <laughs> round of day two uh which is not something you want to see at all uh, that was a rough start to the day for sure mm -hmm. that sucks yep um yeah it was it was a it was a weird situation too because like it was it was a situation where uh, a draw was like kind of similar to a loss for both of us. Like you, there's some like fun, uh, bubble math and stuff that we could have done, but it was just, no, you know, it was just not, not where you want to start. So we had given a pretty, we had a really result, good match. Given oh, the final yeah, result, a, I think you made the right choice. To oh yeah. Play it out. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. It was an insane was, match. Mitch a took a match. really, really hard fought game one. I think I got game two, uh, or was it? Yeah, it was that way pretty sure and then there was like a minute left so we started getting game one going and there was we just ran out of time so yeah there's no time for game three at all yep nope. um but yeah that was uh that was by far my like favorite sylvie match of the weekend for sure um just like incredibly close both of us played really tightly uh it was it was insane but um just yeah really really tough game uh yeah, and then from there you I think you you won out right so uh, with a you got to ID uh, yeah, in the top I eight won from there. The next two uh, that was my win against um, John Jonathan on on Nico and mm -hmm. then against Bailey and then me and Sean the last round just draw to get in top mm -hmm. easy easy ID in yep always nice to be able to do that get in top cut and secure your spot there in the the sweet Vera. Um, that I'm sure speaking is, of which I'll show you guys later yeah oh, absolutely so we, we gotta get a, a shot of the Vera for the viewers on YouTube um, it's another Han Shu art too yeah, oh. yeah oh. it's good stuff uh, for, so for uh, Spotify listeners audio listeners uh, apologize we won't be able to show that to you uh, obviously because you can't you know, there's no video feed uh, but if you go to index.gatcg.com and type in Vera uh, it'll pop up and you can see what it looks like, but it's not, not the real thing. Unfortunately, it's not as nice as it is in person. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Yeah. I mean, and then 
from there, top eight was just a gauntlet of oh. Sylvies for the most part. With <laughs> with two, it was six <laughs> Sylvies, a Tristan deck, and a uh, finally the return of Erupting. Um, and who's it, the player to bring it back? And it was of course, of course, it was Magic, the one and only. Who yeah. else? Who else could it be? Um, and so yeah, the night before up, we had spent so long just hitting and hawing over if we wanted to keep nullifying in the sideboard or not. Like ah nah, we're gonna cut it. Who's bringing Erupting? <laughs> <laughs> just well but you didn't you didn't play it matt though right you you played no so I, like you, I didn't get to play against matt no yeah so it didn't matter anyway like because so you started the top eight you played some sylvie deck um i forget who your opponent was uh because i was too busy watching uh matt do uh, cool erupting things it was against devon okay all right no i wasn't no matt was matt was the next round i was too busy watching sean do cool tristan things yep um <laughs> excuse me yeah so you played devon um snagged the win there and then had to meet sean in in the semis it was it was some fast games against sean <laughs> crushed that uh that tristan list he put together is looks pretty deadly um let's see he's got like uh, we've seen seeing slice and dices pop up recently in tristan lists uh, which is good of, that i yes. was surprised actually that the popularized lists were not relying on slice and dice at all because is it is it is sure it's not shadow strike like unblockable it does 26 damage or whatever it does a ton of damage though at a really low investment and i allows you to i i, I haven't gotten to see them if actually i don't know if it's is your match visible is it something i can no. watch mitch okay no nope. I, I i'm sure i can watch him play this deck a little bit, but um, I assume it gives you an option to not just grind the game out and to actually just kill them it, right away. It's like, oh, hey, look, you're dead. All right. <laughs> we'll bring yeah. out a Sazen Ripper and let's kill you. Yeah, that's, I mean, that card, I right away, Taylor, in our locals, actually, I'd been messing with some some mm-hmm. other assassin lists using this card because I think, like, this thing's pretty cracked, actually. It does a it's, ton of damage <laughs> for the investment. It's, it's, it's I like, was likening it to Rending Flames, but it's colorless. Yeah, it's, it's Norm Rending Flames, essentially. Um, cause it just doubles, you bring out a Sassin Ripper, it doubles that damage too. Like just is dealing a ton of damage to your opponent. Um, let's see. I, I think that's like the main innovation. A lot of the Tristan lists were playing to kind of try and, and speed up their clock a bit. Um, uh, something neat here is Sean was running shadows, shadow resonance as just well. One copy, one copy main to inside. I'm yeah. not sure if that was for Sylvie or not. Um, but I do like that as, as a way to, uh, kind of like stem the bleeding and keep kind of some card flow going once you get to level three. Um, uh, and then you, you generate more shadow tokens as well, which is great. So, um, yeah, yeah it's a card that shadow resonance is a card that doesn't have a particular role that I think it, it plays, but it's just, a, it's motion. It's mm-hmm. motion in every way. It's putting more things on board. It's healing your life a little bit. It's just finding another card deeper into your deck or something. And yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting one of, but one that I can't argue against either. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's always going to have some sort of utility, I think. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, uh, Sean, or yeah, Sean took you down mm-hmm. with this list and then you met Noel in the uh, third place match and was able to wrap that one up. Um, Sylvie v. Sylvie. Sylvie v. Sylvie. Sylvie v. Sylvie. The... That was a long grind of a game, too. I yeah. think we were finishing up our first match after Sean had already won. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we were watching Matt and and Sean on the on the stream, and they finish up their match, and I look over, and Mitch is shuffling up his deck, and I'm like, oh, I really hope that's the end of game two, and they're going to game three. And <laughs> oh, no, unfortunately, no, no. that was not the case. <laughs> <laughs> well, well a lot of I was people... surprised they didn't have us move over to the stream to have something going on. Yeah, I mean, you got to finish the game at that point. You can't just ask some players oh, to yeah. sit down and play one game of a match and then go. So, no, no, um, I, I get it. Um, but yeah, that would have been that would have been really nice. Um, yeah, but you managed to take that down as well, land third place. Um, so again, congratulations! Uh, excellent performance from you. Um, awesome to see you fight through all these like really top players and and take home some some sweet trophies here so i mean not you know the little literal trophy but that that card is a trophy for sure oh that's a lovely trophy for sure Mm -hmm. i would love in a moment to hear from mitch more about sylvie in general i think we have a lot of things we can talk about um regarding the deck and its place and the the new uh, errata that came out for stone scale 
uh, band and everything. But before we do that, I just want to mention. So like, first of all, shout out again, if we haven't given it to Sean uh, for winning Ascent Chicago, which was incredible. I do think this wind Tristan list is um, like Taylor said, minor, like not my minor is not the right word, but subtle innovation, but very effective innovation. And I think the really cool thing to see here, the thing that catch, catches my eye about this top eight is Matt coming in with with erupting again, doing exactly the thing you do in a TCG, which is you let everybody forget about the deck that is still good. And you just go, OK, here, I'm going to bring it to this event now and I'm going to shoot my way into top eight. Um, obviously, Matt is is the best erupting player in the world, period. There's no there's no discussion or argument about that. Um, so. That he's got that going for him, but still, it was a really cool way to just let everything cool down and then use that as you bring it back as a rogue deck this time. Um, and the interesting thing I think about this is when we look at Sean's Tristan list, it is so well poised to not lose to Matt. <laughs> like Sean's list, in some ways, specifically, like Sean is running the Nullifying Lantern main. Um, and Sean is running two incapacitate main with two more in the side. Incapacitate already just makes erupting's life really hard because it can just straight negate the erupting or the fireball. Um, but I really think again this slice and dice in there giving him the pressure to actually just take a level one deck like erupting out of the game um, rather than going well I'm Tristan so I have to make sure I can kill him late in the game before he can erupting me or something, which is, you know, I'm sure something that happened to Matt earlier in the event. I'm sure there was at least one Tristan where they were not prepared to deal damage early. And he just went, well, I'm playing erupting. So you better find your incapacitates. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's just, it's really cool to, I think, look at those little subtle, not just choices uh, in the deck you bring, but choices in specific card choices that sort of like are uh, make it very clear that, Sean had a good matchup against Matt's list, but Matt chose a really cool list for the event to just kind of crush through. And then we see our top eight win Tristan fire erupting <laughs> six Sylvies all underneath <laughs> what mm -hmm. came out on top. You know, it's kind of that's fun to look at. Yep. Yeah, I think moving forward too, we'll see these Tristan lists continue to kind of um, innovate and try and probably try and be low, a little lower to the ground and get rid of the Sylvie player before they get, you know, too comfy at level three and start yeah. grinding out all this value um because i think really mitch that's that is like kind of the key to your success this weekend is um i was saying a lot day two that you had the best slime list in the room um there's a few like subtle differences from your list that that other players have that i think really just make your your list stand out um like and and one that is not necessarily obvious is just i think the inclusion of baby blue slime um there's been a, like you know a lot of these these lists just skip on that because it seems like there's not really doing anything to increase your your value over time. But uh, can you kind of explain a little bit why that was one of the cards you decided to to choose for the weekend? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so my biggest reason why I like the baby blue slime is it just it allows you to keep a board against more of those like heavy ally decks or those long control decks. Um, it helps you more easily guarantee at least one draw on your level two power, so you're not just wasting that when you go up to level two. Um, I think one of the reasons why people don't want it in the deck is it's always going to be going down a card by itself. It doesn't do anything like baby gray or baby green will replace itself or baby red where it'll pitch a flowing if you need to to put through your deck more. It's just not the most exciting card, but I think it's a good way to help you again to stabilize the board, especially when you're going against a lot of other Sylvies that are playing their own slimes. Those Sylvie matchups sometimes um, there's a there's a game that you're playing in the early turns where you're just trying to be the one who kind of maintains board presence as you level. Um, mm -hmm. And if you start getting your things eaten up, then you get to that situation where it's like, well, I, I, I have to I like I have to level. I can't yeah. not level because I lose the game. But I, it means I'm going into two with nothing on board, which means I'm drawing no cards and then they're likely going to level and get cards and that puts them at, you know, the, it puts you at the disadvantage in that situation. So I think it's really, it's really smart to look at baby blue slime, not, not something that is immediately returning the card, but it's something to 
to have uh, available to win the attrition fight against um, against other ally decks, but also I think very importantly, given the metagame here against other slime decks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you go to you go to level one on Sylvie. She gives a buff counter, and all of a sudden your baby blue is a two four. That's ridiculously difficult to to take care of in the early turns of the game. Oh yeah, and then you can just you mind like a two two or a one one baby green or baby baby gray. I'm like mm-hmm. you have to deal with this three health ally because of the two prevention, and then this four health ally, or I'm going to draw a card. Most decks just can't get that done. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you still get to like attack their board as well, which is oh, yeah. fantastic. So uh, another like card I saw some players skipping out on, but. Um, you included, and a few of the players in the top eight also included. This was uh, Slime King. Um, in my opinion, I think it uh, is like one of the, the most important cards on not just like the Slime Mirror, but any any like matchup where you're going to go long and, and really grindy. Like this is how you get even more value out of your Storm Slimes. Yep, just gives you more copies of Storm Slime. Pretty much, you bring out the Slime King next turn. Usually, you'll bring out the Scepter to kill it. To bring out your army of slimes, get their cool effects, and help draw another card off of the scepter as well. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, as as the Merlin player, I noticed too. Like that was the the games I lost were oftentimes just because I could handle the first two storm slimes, but I could not handle the third one. Um, or if it was you know if I was able to get like Incarnate Majesty out and get a spirit out really quickly, uh, I could maybe handle three, but then the fourth one was still going to do it. Then so like the more you can load up on that card, which is just busted in half, <laughs> the better. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about good. Storm Slime more later uh, in the podcast for sure, because there's a lot <laughs> yeah. to say about it. So there's there's one card that I was going through, and like a lot of the Sylvies in top eight was nowhere in their list, nowhere in their main board, nowhere in their sideboard. And I thought that was crazy given the meta we're thinking, and that's uh, Bistro Frenzy. Hmm. Hmm. I want to talk about a, a card that helps you win the mirror, win the board attrition. It's uh, cleaving the whole board. <laughs> Yeah, there's. I mean, there's really no other way to do it in that mirror, right? Uh, it's going to be a long, grindy mirror if you aren't just don't say, "Hey, I'm going to wipe out everything." Um, you've got to like start pointing. You know, worst case scenario, you're pointing your storm slime at allies and instead of at champions. Um, it always feels bad. Mm-hmm. It's like using a blazing throw to kill off a, an ally. It's like, oh, you hate to see it. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's. I mean, that really kind of boils down to like what I really think your deck um, had like maximized on was just maximizing the value of storm slime and like letting making sure you could clear the way so that storm slime could uh do the damage it needed to do instead of having to like play cleanup um yeah. or you know help play defense even like if your storm slime has to play defense uh i mean in real talk it's probably not that bad because you're going to draw into more yeah. storm slimes likely but uh <laughs> it's uh, even then it's still a three one yeah. exactly yeah I, uh, it's, I, wanna... I mean just it's just so much so much value so I, I want to interject really quick and just mention that uh, for our podcast listeners, um, I will have a link in the description uh, that is going to go to Luxera's map for this event where you can look at Mitch's list and the other lists that we're talking about here, because I, I realized that this is a lot um, as I'm sitting here listening, like <laughs> if I didn't have this up right now, I'd be a lot more confused. <laughs> yeah, um, 100%. So, we'll have that there. And I also want to just mention that, you know, you guys are comparing a lot to the other, um sylvie lists that are in the top eight uh and i don't always get everyone's names correct but i do want to shout out chess club because they've got a bunch of these sylvie lists for sure at least a couple of these there's like what three or four of them three, or chess yeah. club? i i don't know every chess club member's username but i see a few of them here <laughs> yeah, for yep, sure. they were they did a really good show in here for sure absolutely incredible event on their end as well i mean really like just yeah, uh, great, great showing from them. They've been grinding for a really long time, um, and you can you see them placing regionals and stuff. So it's it's a, again nice to see some like longtime players be rewarded with with some preparation and results in in a top eight here. And and the difference, one of the big differences I see between uh, the these kind of the, these chess club lists all seem very similar. They've locked into a few things. They're using ordinary bears. Uh, they're all using some number of Gaia's songbird as well um and hymn of gaia's grace appears to be another popular card in these decks so some kind of cool interesting like older terra card things that they find some good interactions with um but 
notably the card that I really like in your list, Mitch, as someone who's messed around with a lot of Sylvie decks is uh, actually running Blissful Calling, which I have found most of the time when I play that it is a Storm Slime in hand. Um, and that I don't know if that maybe it didn't work out for you that day or not, but how did you feel about that that day? So I have a, a love hate with this card. Okay. Um, there was three times in this tournament where I would cast Blissful and I'd miss. Yeah. Just straight up miss. I've it, done that too. It so. felt so bad. <laughs> like, think it's like almost or about half the deck is slime. So you look at top five, like, oh yeah, well, you weren't you in there. No, it was not. <laughs> well, but you got rid of five non slime cards when you did that. A lot of yep. dungeon guys sent to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> that's, that's what you want if you already had one in hand, to be fair. And to be fair, yeah, that would be true. And Mitch if always, one, that Mitch would always has true. one in hand because we we know Mitch. Mitch is always drawing his dungeon guides. No. He's always jar- drawing his turbo charge. And he's so he's got it locked up there. Story for that: uh, <laughs> the night before the event, we were doing a lot of testing, and I had the most insane draws the entire night of testing. There's always dungeon guy. There is always the one of turbo charge. Everything was going great, and then actual day comes around. I'll see a dungeon guide maybe once every two matches or we'll see turbo charge one out of three or four. Or it was, it was rough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's worked pretty, out for you. Pretty rough. It worked uh, out. Yeah. But pretty rough getting third place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A hard, hard life, you know, <laughs> but, uh, so let's get back on to a lot of these lists running, like again, these songbirds, ordinary bears, uh, hymns in the main board. My mm-hmm. biggest problem, why I didn't like that through a lot of my testing is it just leads to a lot of early game variants. You can have these hands where you're full of like all these terror cards, all these advanced slime cards. It leads to a lot of awkward like, all right, how am I going to play cards to level up? Am I going to just play out a limitless slime by itself? Am I going to play out a, a lot of like slime stuff with, with no value? Because like, I might I might play a green slime out with no way to flicker a cake because I just don't have it. And I need to play cards to level up. I think adding that many advanced element cards, like a kind of like a, a rye problem or a crux problem. You'll have these hands that are awkward, leads to rough games. So I tried to minimize as much as I could on that and run cards that help me filter the deck, help me find more storm slimes, help mm-hmm. me be as more consistent as possible. It's so, a risk. It's a risk reward thing, right? Because yeah. then you know when they get to three, then they theoretically have some splashier powerful play like him of guy's grace is great that's a that's a sweet way to just turbo out more power um but consistently getting there is the thing that you're kind of like gambling when you when you play that yep yeah Uh, so there's uh there's one card on my list that i want to call out here it's a spicy one of uh, just a regular old red slime so I've had this question a few times from people about like why are you running red slime in your list at all or why is it just a one of? Uh, main reason why is for one, it helps me have some cheeky plays with Bestial Frenzy. Um, so I'm level one. I can play a four through red slime. Won't do anything. Usually I'm going to do that against more of the ally decks. They're an ally deck. They're not like, oh, I'm going to clear this slime. But, well, I'll lose my board. So they'll probably leave it there. Again, it'll help you allow that level two draw to happen more often. But the main thing is, I level the two, and that same turn I can play Bisho Frenzy to make myself get plus one level. So I'm level three, so I'll turn on Pride. I can cleave the board with the slime they didn't kill. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. That makes sense. That um, makes sense. It, like, very, like, uh, like it, it was slightly less significant, too. It's just another red card for Baby Red Slime, which is kind of yep. nice. Help push some extra damage through. Um, makes your slimer options a little easier to make bigger. Um, and, also, and, pair with that slimer option card, um, it could lead to like an easy early game board wipe. I can play mm-hmm. a red slime and then rupting my own red slime to wipe the board if I need to. Yep. And then all of this continues to kind of feed into the consistency of storm slime as well. Um, like those those cards just both make it easier to fill your banish up with more more slimes and make your storm slimes bigger than what your opponents would be on average if they don't include those cards um and oftentimes like i mean storm slime is just pretty much like the key card in in pretty much any matchup like it's it's far and away the best card in the format at this point i would say uh i think that scepter of lumina has been dethroned um oh yeah yeah 
like 100 percent. like the, the card is just insane uh it's it's a fireball essentially uh that also it's replaces fireball. itself yeah. um and is like functionally free and then also attacks for three <laughs> it's just it's five. just it a just, bonkers card it just keeps on giving it's so for five a lot yeah. of the time <laughs> yeah so um yeah i mean the more you can maximize your storm slimes i think the more successful you're going to be uh here yep. as the sylvie player um all right well okay so we've gone through your list a little bit uh do you have any any final notes on that mitch um not really too much no I mean, I mean, there, there's the is, one of uh, terasite in there which oh, is yeah. really nice as well like keep i've keep been the card flow going in the late game yeah, it's I, just again gives you some more late game play against the Merlin that got there first and has been drawing out of their mind. You just need mm-hmm. you need to grind. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, from there, let's let's talk a little bit about the metagame composition because uh, this was again the largest ascent to date uh, with 282 players. So huge event, excellent turnout here in Chicago is awesome. I'm not here in Chicago. I'm not there anymore. Um, <laughs> Um, it was it was really cool to see that many people in the room playing Grand Archive. It it felt a little bit like Vegas again, just because there were so many people there. Um, it was very cool. Uh, and then, uh, kind of breaking down the metagame here, we already mentioned that the the top eight was six slime lists and uh, one Tristan and one Erupting. Um, overall, uh, there were twenty two percent of players uh, that played Sylvie at this this tournament um slime specifically so that's 61 people who picked up slimes for this which is bonkers like one fifth of the event was was slimes somehow tony didn't play a single slime list all weekend in in the ascent and also in the scrubbed out event <laughs> and in the scrubbed uh, out event too oh my yeah. god that seems so, impossible uh the man the man is blessed um so, I mean, first of all, like just an insane number of Sylvie players. And then it had excellent conversion as well. It put 14 players into uh, the top 32 in day two, and then obviously six more into the top eight. So just like an insane conversion right there. Um, we have another 17 each on 17% each on wind, uh, wind allies and Merlin. Um, so that would be uh, 46 players for wind allies, 47 players for Merlin uh, with just honestly abysmal conversion rates. Like this was not a good tournament at all. Um, we had three Merlin players and one wind ally player in day two. Um, and it was a wind Xander allies, which uh, was a pretty cool looking list. Um, you'll, you'll be able to see that on, on Luxera's map. Um, so just horrible conversion. And honestly, like, playing merlin uh that was definitely a mistake for this weekend for sure it just it was rough um i luckily didn't play a lot of bad matchups until day two when i ran into three sylvie players um so it was just it was pretty rough uh let's see um yeah and honestly like i think i think both these decks have to make pretty big adjustments moving forward in order to like stay relevant to the metagame um Personally, I don't think Merlin can play uh, Ascension anymore. It it feels pretty bad as the fire player to be playing Ascension. Um, like I, I was not very happy to draw it unless I already had like a water or wind card in hand as well, um, or like I knew my opponent was going to have to play like into it some somehow. Like if I was playing Nico, that usually worked out pretty well because it helped me put a clock on. But like even against Sylvie, like it's one of your one of the best ways for Merlin to win that matchup is just to kind of sneak a couple cards out of their memory with uh, Ascension and a win card. But like there's just not actually that many win cards in the Sylvie list. Um it's like four baby greens, some slime shields and maybe slime splissing. So like they it's just not difficult at all for them to to keep the wind out cards out of their, their memory. And then of course, uh, it's basically just gather slime for water. Or if you're Mitch, some baby blues as well. Um, so like, uh, you're just not, you're not getting the bonus ever on that usually. Um, so it's a big rough, problem right? too, being that all, every single card you name is one that you want to hold up. Yep. Exactly. Yep. It's like, it's, it's, they don't even have to try to not put cards <laughs> in the memory. There's why well, I just keep these in my hand anyway. There's <laughs> the rest go in there. Yep. So, yeah. I, it makes sense. Yeah. So, um, and then of course, it, I mean, it's obviously just, it's really rough to play if you're not drawing a card off of it because you can't loop it as easily. So um, that's probably going to gonna get cut here, I think, from from successful lists moving forward. Um, I played Fragmented Spirit of Fire this weekend and that felt really good in Merlin. Um, 
there were a couple instances where I noticed like being down a card affected me uh, in the early game. Um, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty trivial to get an early level two and then go to, um, you a floating memory gain that level counter, pop the spirit shard token and draw a card. Um, so it's, it usually doesn't take too long to, to get back up to full strength. And then of course you just get to make your opening hands a lot smoother. Uh, the instances where I, I noticed it was like kind of rough was where you would, um, try You would, you'd want to level to two and then also hold up flame sweep. And usually I was one card off of that. Whereas if I had been the normal fire spirit, that wouldn't have been an issue. Um, but uh, also I probably, I don't think I would have had like the, either the flame sweeper or the dungeon guide flame sweep combo in order to pull that, that off anyway, had I not like glimpsed a bunch of cards to the bottom. Cause you, you, you can just really ag- aggressively like glimpse her dungeon guide and, and creative shot floating memory. And, and yeah, I'm, I was often glimpsing four plus cards. It was not uncommon for me to, like shove five cards on the bottom. You are the only fragmented spirit player in the top uh, 32 that I can. Well, actually uh, I, there's uh, a couple... at least for, for Merlin's. Sorry. I haven't looked at every single like <laughs> Tristan list and stuff here, but there was, there was uh, one at uh, yeah 37 as well. Yeah. So just bubbled out. Um, but I think that's something we'll see moving forward. It, it felt really good. Um, and then wind allies, I have no idea what they're going to do to kind of help, help their situation in this meta game. Um, it seems really, really, really hostile at the moment. It's, uh, yeah. 2% conversion with 46 players playing. It is pretty, that's pretty rough. Um, mm-hmm. obviously it's just not, uh, I mean, what, what we're seeing here is what we always say that, I mean, this is, this is just more, um, Another example of the metagame doing exactly what we expect every time, which is early in the metagame, we saw the success of these aggressive decks. And then the mid-range decks clearly took over. Now, in this case, the mid-range decks (laughs) that we got are fairly pushed mid-range decks. Yeah, I would I would actually call Sylvia a combo deck at this point. It's yeah, it doesn't feel very mid-rangey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it yeah. plays it plays in the mid range space, you know. Sylvie it, Sylvie doesn't necessarily she has the tools to go late. She can yeah, go pretty late, but absolutely. she doesn't try to go late. Yep. Right. She yep. just uses those tools to kind of win when she's forced to go late by a control deck, um, which is where she's she's playing in between a faster deck and a controlling deck. So I think mm-hmm. she still counts even she's a combo mid range. The combo deck that can kill you with a six six slime. Yep. Yeah, I mean <laughs> sure everything everything generates value in the slimes deck, so it, it feels very mid rangey. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean that's another thing too, is I I expected Wind Allies to kind of have a better matchup against Sylvie than they did this weekend. Uh, which was one of the reasons why I convinced myself into playing Merlin. <laughs> um and so just like I, I played I think I played two Wind Allies on the weekend and that was uh like two fewer than I wanted to see. So the uh, for me personally, and I'm de- definitely want to hear Mitch's take on this too. But when playing Sylvie, the decks that I fear aren't the like ally, you know, allies type decks. It's the Xander, like just turbo aggro decks that will just kill you before you can get your stuff set up if your hand isn't like perfect. Um, so, Mitch, what do you think? Oh, 100% agree. If it's like an aggro fire Xander, you're just always on the bad foot because you want to spend time to like build your draws, sculpt your hand, and you have no time. If you don't draw the gather slimes or the slime shields, you're mostly just dead before you even get to do anything. Yeah. And those decks, in a sense, I think across the board, those decks are underrepresented. Every single ascent, people are... People are afraid to bring you know and for maybe for good reason because those decks are kind of coin flippy the red deck wins the fire yeah. deck aggro fire aggro xander fire aggro tristan another option um but they straight spike some matchups that shouldn't be as winnable for a lot of other decks they could just they just go well i turn two and you're <laughs> you're dead so what are you gonna do <laughs> you know yep yeah, I mean that that's one of the things too. I think Sylvie has a better than expected like fire aggro matchup. Like having four main board gather slimes is pretty bonkers. <laughs> yeah. So it it does a lot to really ruin their day. Um so yeah, I mean like the these kind of more aggressive low to the ground decks, we'll see see how they 
they adapt moving forward. I, I'm not really sure where they go from here. Um, after that, we had a bunch of Tristans, 38 players on Tristan. This still had a, a very good conversion, I would say, of um, six players into the top 32. So that's about 16%. So that's very respectable um, above the number of players that started originally. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, cool lists, actually. So you've got some more traditional like Tristan lists we've seen that are just running Shadow Strike and Mastermind Scheme and trying to accumulate a ton of prep counters and kill you in one big blow. Uh, we've got the adaption, uh, adop- adoption of slice and dice in a lot of these lists as well to, to kind of get some uh, sneakier kills on lower levels or just, you know, another way to end the game earlier uh, or at all. And then there was, an, there was another list I want to call out that uh, had, was running penumbral waltzes too, uh, and Ooh. along with sharpening stone in the material deck to kind of create these go wide turns. Um, it was pretty cheeky. Uh, it was, it was uh, really like pretty unique take on, on Tristan so far. Uh, I think, I mean, some people I think might have like messed around with this at the beginning of the format, but it's been a while since I've seen something like this. So it was nice to see this come out because you can just kind of, you can kind of like just blow up your opponent out of nowhere over the course of a turn or two again with, with especially with a free uh, Shadow's Claw activation and uh, throwing down a Penumble Waltz by itself is um, Shadow's Claw and that is nine damage. And then throwing down a Sharpening Stone is another five on top of that. This list also runs Inspiring Call, which is another four per Inspiring Call. So like a lot of that can add up pretty quickly. Here it is. It's Owly number 26. <laughs> number 26. That's a... Yeah, this is a neat list. I like that, this. I, yeah, I played them in, in uh, day one and they just just stomped me. Um, it was it was not it was a very quick match, uh, very quick two zero for them. They're um, running four scout the land and two disorienting winds too. There's a lot of like a lot of these decks are one scout the land. They're just mm-hmm. find you know when you need it, find something you need. That's cool. But I I've I think I've talked about this early on too. I thought scout the land was a Seemed actually like a pretty pushed card, and yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Good to see. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, a lot of a lot of space to still innovate with Tristan. I would say um, a lot of ways you can kind of can move this forward. Uh, same with same with Merlin. And then uh, the part I've been waiting for is the return of erupting uh, channel favorite, friend of the channel. Um, we we love this deck here. We love the card erupting <laughs> rhapsody. It's fantastic. Good um, stuff. It's oh, good yeah. stuff. This this is really neat. Matt, I think, has been sitting on this list for a while um, in in preparation for this event. And the really cool innovation here is the use of Tristan Underhanded uh, to replace Rai uh, so that you can still, you know, go off with uh, like a uh, an eight card hand in this case uh, for the full combo instead of the nine cards you would need for Rai. Uh, the way this works is that uh, you level to Tristan um, you've got to do this on the turn you level to Tristan because she gives you agility three, which means you get to return three cards from your memory to your hand at the end of the turn. Um, so if you have eight cards in hand, you can use three of those cards to play an Ember Song. You can use another three of those cards to play an Erupting Rhapsody. And then you have two cards left over, uh, one of which is going to be a Fireball. And then you go to your end step, you return three cards, you now have Fireball plus four other cards, and you can play the Fireball f- uh, for the full cost instead of the the reduced class bonus cost. I uh, still get the same same effect as if you were you had gone to Rye. And in fact, it's a card cheaper. Um, so really sweet innovation. Um, Ryan was playing this uh, in, at Chicago as well and caught me completely off guard with the game one. Um, I was very much not expecting Tristan to show up. <laughs> and I just got blown out really fast. I know we have a number of... Uh, players who are not uh, listeners in our podcast who are players who are not tournament grinders and and maybe didn't even like are, aren't quite following necessarily so i just want to really quick step back into tristan exactly to, to exactly explain what is going on and why this is so cool because a lot of people read tristan and specifically they read agility and think okay that means i get to pick up some cards for next turn um, and <laughs> if you, if that was how it worked, this wouldn't be very good because then you would fireball them for two next turn. <laughs> but what you actually get to do is agility creates this delayed trigger. When it resolves, you return the three cards to hand that it resolves at the beginning of the end step, but the end step doesn't end until both players pass, right? So you resolve the agility and then it's your opportunity. 
as once the agility resolves to do something else before the end step ends, which is when you go, hey, remember that erupting Rhapsody that I played earlier this turn? Well, my level is still 16, so <laughs> you are very dead. <laughs> and then you play the fireball. Um, so that is, uh, that is, uh, I, I think, uh, entirely clever. Very, very clever use of that card. Um, again, just like this thing that I love about Grand Archive where everything has so many nuances to it and it leads to these stories and turns where people show i'm gonna do something that nobody has done yet and i'm gonna get second place today because of that <laughs> um it's the same thing when people started using a song of frost to cancel their resolute stand on their own attack like that happened at the new zealand i think the auckland mm -hmm. i said yep. is when that like that came out and was like <laughs> what <laughs> you could do that um so i would not be surprised to start to see some more tristan shenanigans with agility after this um erupting getting played more specifically though i also want to mention that like matt's list here matt is matt is a master okay just like across the board because we've seen matt bring so many variations of erupting lists <laughs> to tournaments but every single time these are these are these aren't just like you know haphazard well i'm gonna put erupting together and i'm gonna combo off these are like statues of david okay <laughs> the, with with everything showing nothing broken off all right <laughs> these are beautiful i'm looking at this list and I, i'm I'm thinking what is different about this list than his previous ones. And I notice Matt does not care at all about wiping the board where previously, if you grab any look, even me, I grab a bog standard erupting list off the streets and I went and played a nationals, whatever that was running for innervate fury. It was running Merlin or sorry, Lorraine two in order to play um, uh, flame sweep to be able to clear the board. You're playing all these little th and, and, um, potentially even fast cures in the main to like, you know, Matt knew exactly what this metagame was going to be. He knew exactly what he was going to see. And he said, I don't need to put any of this garbage in here. <laughs> the innervates are in the sideboard. Okay. He's like, respect, respect because, because the U S plays aggressively. That's just a part of grand archives culture. But he said, no, 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 that's fine. He put in the under fires that protects you against just about everything. The stealth even protects you against um, uh, random slimes hitting you and stuff, right? Unless they're ethereal slime. I say. <laughs> but, you know. Um, well, but, even then, with flash grenade, it's still going to prevent three of that damage. Well, there, yeah. yeah, there, yeah. See, he's got the tech in there, but he, this man just like knew exactly what he was building for. He took out the chaff, and he... Look at this one reduced ash in the main. They're like, someone might have a lantern. <laughs> But it's not going to be many people, okay? <laughs> we don't we don't need them. And then he put again the more respect on the side. But every single time this guy brings a list, it is just a perfect like. And you look at the metagame he faced. That's that's the list you should. It's it's almost like he already saw what the metagame was and then sent the list to himself in the past <laughs> to play. I don't know. I just I had to gush about it because it's really really remarkable. I think yep. I I agree. It's fantastic. Um, and I think we could sit here and fangirl over Matt all day. I um, will all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, I'll do it. We, we got to move on. No, we. <laughs> oh, we got, oh, come we have, on. We have the okay. last slime cast out. Matt cast is in. Let's go. There we yes, go. let's go. Oh, the Matt cast. With that. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Fine, fine. Take control again, Taylor. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, there were a few players on erupting. There weren't that many. Um, but uh, I think it was uh, Matt and crew who were on the list, and it was it was pretty sweet. Uh, and then, of course, um, something we haven't talked about yet, but Nico uh, ha is still like a, a very significant and relevant part of this metagame as well. Um, I think she has a pretty poor Sylvie matchup, um, it just based on, on uh, Mitch's uh, experience. Um, but there were still 25 Nico players at the event, put three players into day two, which is a very respectable conversion rate, I think, especially in a very hostile meta like that. Um, and she's just she's still doing really cool, strong stuff where she's you know either hitting you with an icebound slam or taking control of the game and making you kind of regret some life choices and hitting you with a mage brain lash for twelve. So 
a lot of sweet stuff going on there. Oh, I think if uh, Sylvie so wasn't as big of an, in the meta game, I could see Nico being the best deck in the room. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we like Corbin, like we said, Corbin was saying it's best deck in the format, and I, I think if yeah, if it wasn't for Sylvie, that would be a very difficult thing to argue against for sure um she just she beats up on tristan she oh, says i tristan screw you man and and sends her home um it's kind of it's kind of bonkers actually how how good that matchup is for nico i think um, it's it's really just an example of the the thing that people create spirited debates with online all the time which is like your local metagame is going to represent just a slice of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if your local metagame didn't latch on to Sylvie for one reason or another, then your local metagame probably latched on to Tristan. If your local metagame latched on to Tristan, then Nico is clearly the deck to play. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, our our local metagame, we had uh, several of us playing Sylvie quite a bit. And Taylor, you definitely had your fair share of running into infinite blocker dot sylvie deck where mm -hmm. like well yeah it never hits slam never hits ravishing finale never hits um yep. and then suddenly you're dead because storm slimes yep. uh which is which is where that deck really has that advantage yeah yeah um i mean yeah like i think this whole this whole we've, we spent a lot of time here talking about the metagame and i'm gonna i'm gonna sit here and oversimplify it quite a bit by just saying you know storm slime you should be playing storm slime <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll buy that for a dollar yeah <laughs> honestly that's a yeah that, that might be overcharging you for that to be honest <laughs> um willing to pay mm -hmm. I, yeah i mean just looking at the at Ascent chicago in the past few events um it's pretty clear sylvie is just like the powerhouse that a lot of people knew she was but we're not taking to events yet for whatever reason so um yeah i mean just if moving forward you gotta you gotta be prepared for sylvie um and uh I, I you know i played against her quite a few times this last week and i still don't know how to you know how to how to fight against her effectively so mitch what what as the the resident slime player or one of them <laughs> i should say what makes you lose sleep at night uh um so erupting so the decks that give sort of the most trouble are gonna be like decks that can combo faster so like rye Rai is a toss-up matchup. I, I lost to a Rai in the tournament, one of my few losses before top cuts, because Rai just went faster. Uh, erupting, too, because again, I'll just go faster than you. I'll sit there, try and get my cute little slime value, level three for my storm slimes. Oh, hey, I'm dead already. I have level two, maybe. Um, otherwise, just really fast. So, talk about like uh, water decks, uh, water allies in general. Um, the fact that water allies can present a good clock on the board right away, but they have this late game reach damage through if they're playing Xandrila have poison dagger or just the scepter of Lumina itself. The ability to just level the one dungeon guide to two for eight damage out of nowhere, just puts Sylvie in a really hard spot anytime you're taking damage. It's really hard early on to deal with like the two threes or the three, four, if they have the frost worm paladins. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, if we so so there's a, a site we've been using lately i want to shout out here quick because i i have mm. found it to be invaluable it's got a lot of sweet tools even just outside of matchup information but it's a uh, fractal dash of dash insight.mduo13.com um as it's been kind of, like this site compiles a lot of events so i'm not sure who like has been has been putting this together or not but huge shout out to you if you're if you're listening by the way um it's fantastic I, <laughs> this is such a helpful site I'm a big fan of this. Um, so huge props to 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 the the maintainer of this. Um, but yeah, I mean, so they they they've got all the matchup data for this event, and of you know, so take I mean, these are small sample sizes again, so take this with a grain of salt. Um, but I think you know, in my experience, these are you know line up with what I've seen. Um, Water Allies was the only only matchup against Slimes in the tournament that had more than like twenty matches. Um, that actually had a, a positive record against slimes. Everything else was less than 50%, sometimes by <laughs> like so quite a large margin. It's um, crazy to look at. And like even this water allies list is uh it had like a 52.9% win 
win rate uh, over <laughs> 35 <positive>. matches. So like, <laughs> it's not positive. even like it's insanely favorable or anything like that. Oh. It's like borderline even, right? Like again, with a larger sample size, it's possible. This is also a bad matchup. Of, I mean, you know, maybe with a larger sample size, some of these other matchups are, are good. Uh, from what I've seen, I, I doubt that. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, if, the way you need to, to hit Sylvia is like, you need to hit her hard and you need to hit her, hit her fast. Cause um, like, you know, I stated earlier in the podcast, there's, <laughs> there were times where I had two storm slimes beat and I was ready to like finish Sylvia off. And then she drew, drew the third and well, I was like, well can't really do much do about do? that, you know? And, and to be fair, like, listen, I, I understand like I'm, I'm a dirty Merlin player. I know what it's like to draw three fireballs and kill somebody. I don't know where I get it. Like I, <laughs> same thing. I understand. Um, it's just that these fireballs also are like free and attack for three and draw you two cards <laughs> and replace themselves and stuff. So it's just, it's, it's bonkers, but uh, it's, it's just a, it's a really difficult card to actively like fight against. Um, it, like I finally learned after this tournament too, like you can't let the storm slime really like live on board at all. Like if you are, are going into a later game, you, you kind of just have to rip the bandaid off and kill it on site. It's just going to get worse the longer you wait um because it's attacking you for three um and like it sucks it sucks to give the silly player even more cards um or to let them like kind of recycle their hands some more uh during or their give turn them a storm slime under their slime king yeah i mean it just it's it's horrible but you have to do it because like other unless you're killing them that turn or something like it just there's no getting around it unfortunately no so um, I mean, and yeah, and I, again, like this really just kind of all comes down to like getting, getting under storm slime, the, the faster you can go, the more resiliently you can go, the better. Cause like you can only play so many veiling breezes, right? Um, <laughs> unfortunately you can, you can only run four veiling breezes, but Sylvie can run four storm slimes and also two slime Kings to bring them back, uh, or more even. And also blissful callings and gather slimes to find them. So like <laughs> you just, the damage prevention is uh, like in this case, the best defense is a good offense. It's, it's a deck that, I mean, it's, a, it's as if Merlin had ways to recur fireballs, which he has zero way to do that mm-hmm. or ways and ways to search for <laughs> fireballs, <laughs> uh, which, which all, I mean, I think if those tools existed for Merlin, we would be having a different conversation. Oh, oh 100%. Yes. Yeah. Can you imagine like a card that just brought, even like a, if it costs like three reserve and just brought like a spell back into your hand, it'd be, that'd be an oh. insane card in Merlin. Like, yes, please. I'd love that. <laughs> it'd be really good interrupting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, oh my God. Um, you know, again, we mentioned this before in previous renditions of the slime cast, but the the thing about Sylvie is that, like, obviously right now she's super good. We've known that. We've known that for a long time. We've taught. We've said that it took a Some couple of, us of have tournaments. Been in denial about it, but yeah, yeah, that's fair. They're seeing that. the light. They know what they did. Um, <laughs> and it took people a few major tournaments to really start to understand. Oh yeah, she's here. Uh, she's here, and and she's big and powerful. But <laughs> the slimes kind of stop here right like it's unlikely that there's going to be a lot of significant slime support going forward so you know every every tcg has some amount of power creep that occurs let's let me stop you there because um last i checked there's a there's a brand new advanced element coming out in mortal ambition Uh uh, called exia which is the perfect opportunity for an exia slime so that's true yeah. I, I said n- not a significant amount of support. Now, I, the the Axia Slime, if we get an Axia Slime, it could be super powerful, better than Storm Slime. I don't know. <laughs> it's true. It's It certainly could be. But I'm just saying that as the game progresses, even if we don't hit Storm Slime right now with a ban or something, as the game progresses, other decks are sure to start to get a little closer to the power level of storm slime right now of, of the slime deck right now. And the slime deck is just less likely to get significant amounts of support going forward where it it sounds like it'll maybe be Sylvie or another tamer might get some other animal type that they work with or something in, in another deck. So I would encourage people, my take on this, I want to hear you what you guys both think, but I would encourage people to just, um, do your best to smile through the, the fun Sylvie. Honestly, Sylvie deserved this a little bit. 
right? Just a little after the first couple of sets. It was not looking good for her. She has some limelight right now. Shout out to limelight. Pun, pun <laughs> intended. Um, slime light. Uh, but, um, you know, I think I don't want her to be oppressive in the format. I don't want her to be the only deck you can play. I don't think that should be the case. Um, but we also don't, I don't think, need to do anything drastic. And Mortal Ambitions are on the corner. And who knows what's going to happen in that set. You know, I think waiting and seeing what happens there and, and going forward is certainly a reasonable course of action, too. How about you guys? Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I I will admit I was surprised. I, we didn't see Storm Slime on move to category one or two on Monday, um, even despite the Stone, Stone Scale Band Errata, which we'll get into here shortly as well. Yeah, um, just because it's like such a powerful card. Um, like it just does so many things for, for the cost and everything in the deck really just synergizes really well with it. Um, like stone scale ban is going to dump cards into your graveyard for you to, to banish with slime eruption or even better to banish to activate Gaia's blessing, uh, which just makes your storm slimes bigger. Uh, storm slimes, of course, like just feed on themselves and make any subsequent slimes larger as well. Um, and they, I mean, they're just essentially like a free three, one that, that fireballs, like it has, it has insane scaling, uh, which is really we, something we haven't seen out of uh, many other cards yet either. Um, like it just gets super deadly as the game goes on. Um, so I, I was, I was a little surprised to see like that it, uh, was not even on, like on a watch list, uh, kind of category, especially after this weekend too. There's just, like the, the ubiquitousness of slimes was, Pretty wild to see at uh, Chicago for sure, um, but you know we'll see what happens. Like I think that so there was a an errata made for Stone Scale Band. Um, this is the first time this has happened so far, and the the reason why it was errata and not banned entirely is because uh, this is one of the Proxy's Vault cards. So that means it's one of the cards that has been introduced directly to. Uh, the game, not through like a booster set or a recollection set or starter decks or anything like that. It was just uh, put on to the index and we was of the shore said, you can print this and play it in your material deck. Um, uh, and uh, you'll need a real copy at some point to be official. But for now, um, you know, we, since we don't have a way to like just direct mail those to people, uh, print and play these cards. Um, and that also kind of leaves them in a, a unique position of being able to like kind of errata some of these cards as well, uh, you know, change the text up of those cards without actually changing the legality of them. Um, and so they, they did that this weekend uh, to Stone Scale Band. They increased the memory cost from zero to one. They increased the reserve cost of the activation uh, from one to two. And then they also uh, made it so that instead of any, you can play as many allies as you want at fast speed for the rest of the turn. Uh, the activation now says the next ally you play is at fast speed. Um, so, or the next ally this turn, I should say that you play is at fast speed. So now you can't, you can't pop off three storm slimes at the end of your opponent's turn. You can only pop one off now. Um, Shoot. No, no. Yeah, big old <laughs> bummer. Uh, so we'll see if that is enough to, to, to kind of hinder the deck in the meantime. Um, I, th I think that uh, it's definitely a significant change. Like just adding a, a memory cost in general makes cards a lot more clunky, um, especially in slimes um, where you don't necessarily always want to banish your slimes to pay for stone scale band. You would prefer to banish them and, you know, to pay for guy's blessing. Um, so, I mean, on top of having to banish a card for stone scale band, it also just makes your stone scale band a lot more difficult because now you, you might need four allies in hand to make sure you get, you maximize the, the discard three, draw three from stone scale band instead of just the normal three. Um, so that, that actually might kind of slow down the deck, um, a fair amount. Um, you're just not going to be able to like do as you are going to be less consistent in like a common play pattern here. Um, is for Sylvie to go to level three, do her cool level three turn, and then next turn materialize Quicksilver Grail and put Stone, Stone Scale Band under it. And then during that turn, you can play some cards, pay for those cards with allies, and then you activate Quicksilver Grail to play the Stone Scale Band, discard the cards you put into memory, 
and draw those cards into hand, draw new cards into hand then. And now it's kind of like you have a whole new hand for the turn and just like refilled. So and you play, put three slimes into your graveyard to banish the guy's blessing. Exactly. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's the it's the it, linchpin like major play that you make at yep. level three with Sylvie. It's really strong. Yes. And so this this will probably like take a hit like this is not going to be you're not going to be able to as consistently go to level three and just you know have have the nuts every time um like you were in the past so we'll see how that goes um again too like if you're putting pressure on her it just makes that play even more difficult now um like oftentimes the way a lot of these decks would sneak out wins against sylvie is you put some pressure on her you force her to go to level three before she has a, a hand size she's comfortable with and then now all of a sudden like she gets to play like one turn, one slime for free on, on her level three turn, maybe another slime. Uh, and then she passes and then she, she starts her next turn with like two or three cards in hand, maybe. Um, so at this point, like stone scale ban is, is not a good card to play at all um, in that situation. So, so we'll see if, if that's enough to kind of um, slow the deck down in the meantime. And I'm, I'm happy to kind of wait and see what happens there. So um, Mitch, what are your thoughts on this? Um, so first off, I agree. I think it's a little surprising that Storm Slime was at least put to category one. Just like, hey, we realize this might be a problem. So you let you know we're watching it. Uh, but for Stone Scale Band, it's definitely a sizable nerf. Again, they hit all three parts of the card outside of how many discard and draw. Um, it might make people want to run more Floating Memory to get around that one reserve cost. Which, if they do that, it's going to almost negate the entire nerf. Because, I mean, even though playing the things at fast speed was wonderful, and it's great, definitely powerful, the biggest power, again, is just being able to cycle your hand and do the guy's blessing stuff. So if you can reliably find ways to get floating memory to help pay for the cost to offset it, it still will do the same desired effect most of the time. Um, so I, I do think that actually Sylvie decks kind of have a more difficult time finding room for these the, like floating memory cards. If I can quick interrupt, because uh, I agree that's a really good way to kind of mitigate that, obviously. Um, but a lot of the slimes don't really have floating memory. Um, you've got to start playing things like Ordinary Bear, which don't really synergize with the deck very much. And you get some some slime eruptions, which are are you have a much bigger reason to play those, which are a great card. You should probably be playing them anyway. But um, it also just kind of gives like more counterplay then too, because there's ways to interact with floating memory. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to no, you're completely good. derail you. You're fine. Um, so my biggest thing from this is even if this nerf doesn't turn out to be as big of an impact as people want it to be, what it's going to do for a lot of players is to give them that the thing in their head, like, Oh, this card's nerfed. This deck's bad. So they won't try it anymore. They won't experiment anymore. Like, all right, we'll try something else now. So I think, a lot of players might jump off Sylvie too quick before fully exploring how much this nerf will actually affect the deck. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I do want to talk uh, quickly about what Dan said about how, um, you know, slime probably isn't going to be getting a lot of support in the near future. Um, which I think also is a, a argument for keeping storm slime off the watch list at all. Um, if that card is not going to be, like it, if it's not going to be hindering design choices or anything like that, and it's not explicitly too powerful for the format, then um, it makes a lot of sense to not put it on the watch list, right? Because like, yeah, you know, if we're not expecting more signs, it's just not going to get better than it currently is. It's not going to be hindering anything they can print. So it makes a lot of sense then that, it, that it's not on the ban list. Um, I think there is an argument to be made that it is too powerful for the format. Um, but that's a different, I think, discussion than, than yeah, you know, yeah. whether it's going to be hindering their ability to, to create cards for the game. Yeah, uh, well, we'll ultimately see, I think, where the power level of things land when we get Mortal Ambition. Mm-hmm. Um, we start to see where things are moving. You know, Grand Archive has been a game that has been uh, it, it, this was this is the it's one of the smallest company upstart games that is actually a legitimate retail TCG at this point. Um, And that comes with some inherent baggage as the designers find their footing. They didn't, they didn't get to start with the backing of a huge company that just buys massive, uh, that, that pays for major known designers to design games that are 
slightly different than Magic the Gathering, <laughs> so they can have a they have a strong. You know, I'm saying that oh, yeah, that, yeah. that mm-hmm. gives them a basis of uh, of power level understanding built in already, right? Whereas when you come with a game of Grand Archive, there was a, there were a lot of we've talked about them other episodes. There are a lot of lessons learned from set one and set two and set three and set four. <laughs> it's, it's just you know, there's a lot of of learning that has to happen. Um, so we'll see where set five goes, and we'll see where set six goes, and. Is Storm Slime too powerful? Um, Taylor earlier in this episode said it is the strongest card. You, you said that in the episode, right? That was yeah. four. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Scepter of if Lumina not, has we'll been dethroned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Scepter of Lumina, Taylor and I both previously called the best card in the game. Uh, the best single card in the game is Storm Slime. I feel really, really comfortable saying that. Yep. Um, that said, Taylor and I, when when we thought that Scepter of Lumina was the strongest card in the game, we also didn't say it needed to be banned. Mm-hmm. It was on the watch list. We thought that's fine. If Storm Slime was on the watch list, I would also think that's perfectly reasonable. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it makes sense, <laughs> right? Um, but I think, yeah, we'll just we'll see where set five goes and yep. see where the power level things are and see importantly. See what interaction, more interaction starts to exist in the game because the game ultimately comes down to how you can interact with each other or how you can be Matt and just know exactly what everyone's going to play and destroy them, except for the one Tristan deck that actually (laughs) counters you (laughs) very specifically. (laughs) It's like almost like Matt's bringing erupting. I have to make sure I can beat it in finals. (laughs) Exactly. Mission accomplished. Yes. Good Uh, job, Sean. any, Any closing thoughts? Uh, I have one, and it's showing off this cool viewer before we go. Yeah, oh, here we go. got it. Okay, okay, excellent, yes. excellent. We couldn't, we couldn't not show this off. The uh... here, here's pulling it up. He's pulling it up for our audio listeners. There we go. Oh, it is. We a got card. a little bit of glare situation, but it is okay. It is beautiful. Oh, let me get it out of the case all the way. Oh yes, there we go. Yeah, break that slab open. Yes. It's not sl- it's not slab. It's not, a slab. It's not slab, but it yeah. it's you know, it's, it's thematically Put it in front of your face, Mitch, so that it it's it focuses on that a little bit more, maybe. Well, all right. Your webcam kind of. is your webcam is struggling to get a crisp image, unfortunately. But <laughs> unfortunate. You'll oh, just have to hard. trust us that it's beautiful. Actually, Dan doesn't even know that's beautiful because he hasn't seen it yet. So. I haven't gotten to see it in person. Yeah. I Tomorrow I'm you'll, this weekend. you'll see it. Um, I, I actually want to step back really quick and just say, I'm not sure. Did the question ever get answered? Because we might've left some people waiting. How do you, how, what are you afraid of Mitch? How do you beat Sylvie? Oh, yeah. I think we kind of, we sort of we, diverted entirely. Yeah, but we little, talked well, about it. Yeah. I mean, we, we went into it a bit. Okay. So yeah, My round. Again, I think the way you want to beat Sylvie is go fast in the Sylvie. So yeah, like mm-hmm. combo decks, like erupting sure. or the fire yeah. Xander or, so, so the, I mean, yeah, I, I, I would actually, I would take another look at Merlin here as well with this stone scale nerf. Um, a lot of Merlin, like a lot of the trouble I had with Merlin was that oftentimes you could get overwhelmed, uh, on their level three turn and the, the subsequent stone scale ban turn, um, and just not have the ability to, to defend from their onslaught and you just get, you know, zero to 28 over two turns. Um, that is less of an issue now. You still have the same issue of trying to beat them in the long game and beat their four storm slimes, but fireballs are still a really good card. And Incarnate Majesty getting a Majestic Spirit uh, makes storm slimes a lot more awkward for the silly player because uh, they have to figure out how to get there that that spirit before they really start doing some damage. So um, Merlin actually might be able to keep up now. Um, we'll see. The issue is always incarnating before you're dead to storm slimes. Exactly. Yep. And um, and again, I like Mitch's consistent build that has gathers and blissfuls. Is like, I he's very rarely I feel not going to have the storm slime before yeah. you can get the incarnate down. So, if there's any innovation to be done out there, I think it would be in finding ways to get a stronger shield up before the storm slime hits. Yeah, you, like I think many decks, not just Merlin, should be mainboarding a safeguard amulet here. Um, one of the best ways to kind of shield yourself here from a storm slime. Um, let's see and then yeah I think Tristan as well has a lot of ways to like kind of get get lower to the ground and, and attack Sylvie and deal a ton of damage before she really pops off so 
I like the slice and dice. Again, mm-hmm. I, I like the addition of that because Tristan is going to lose if Sylvie can just kind of have the, you know, have the him in order to redirect the shadow strike and then get you right. Mm-hmm. And putting in a higher sort of threat density in that Tristan deck is like, you can actually get the slice and dices down before the him is ready to go to redirect the, the shadow strike. And then she can't do anything uh, um, as unless she has an interceptor out, but Tristan is very good at dealing with interceptors. Tristan doesn't really care about that. She's got tons of one ones that drew her a card. Just take them out. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, 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 that was kind of the section I wanted to talk about. Just like there, I think there are some decks right now. There are some tweaks. There's some, there's some little things that can be done to shore that matchup up a little bit more. And we're seeing some successful innovation out of Chicago already, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I will say like, there's a few events left in this season as well for people to kind of get out there and innovate. We've obviously got Ascent Singapore uh, in September. There are a few regionals still left to happen. Uh, and then there, I think our star championships happening throughout the next couple months as well. So tons of events. Uh, I, I'm going to end by saying that uh, if I was getting ready for another big event, I would be, and I wasn't a, the number one Sylvie hater. I would be <laughs> trying, still trying to make storm slime, storm slime and slimes work with this new stone scale band. Um, thankfully I have, you know, dignity and self-respect, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not my um, heart. I can't deal. Uh, but That's... anyway, uh, I also, as we wrap up, I want to, uh, you know, quick uh, apology to our newer listeners and newer players that are listening. Um, we, we kind of skipped over a lot of, uh, we've been trying to get better about, you know, explaining what cards do as, as we go throughout the episode and, and we're talking about them. Um, we did that zero times. Today. We did that zero times tonight. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it, it was a more competitively focused event I and mean, there was a lot of things to get through. Um, but when we get back to our kind of our, our basic element series, we're hitting wind next. We will definitely be keeping that more in mind as well. Um, but thank you for kind of putting up with that, uh, this episode, uh, as we wrap up here. So, um, yeah. And, and thank you as well for, for listening. Uh, we will see you in a another two weeks, uh, with another episode of the recollection step and, uh, one final congratulations to ascent Chicago runner up, runner up Mitch. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks again Mitch. guys for having me on here. Appreciate it. <laughs> really appreciate, uh, um, Really appreciate you being on the podcast and also being in our local area to push our competitive level up as well. Uh, both you and Taylor, obviously, we both killed it. Taylor, Taylor got 14th. He's going to be modest about it, but that, um, for which is actually kind of weird because Taylor's not normally <laughs> very modest about that. I, um, I like to think I'm like fairly modest. I kind of you gotta stay humble, as Kendrick Lamar would say. Yes. So. Hashtag stay humble. Oh, no, Taylor exactly. also had a fantastic weekend too. Yeah, you guys did great. I was really proud of you, even though I couldn't be there. Um, I was glued to the phone anytime there were updates coming in about where you guys were at. Uh, That's so we no- missed. We were missing Coach Dan. If we had Coach yep. Dan, there would have been a different event. Coach, 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 that was such a good picture <laughs> at Worlds. <laughs> uh, yeah, Coach, Coach Dan was missing. Coach Dan was busy uh, schmoozing with some other uh-huh. some other games and companies at Gen Con and uh, having a, a generally debaucherous time. And if you want to hear about <laughs> the the Gen Con debauchery, that will be on next week's podcasts, uh, starting with Galactic Ambitions. So you can look forward to some of that discussion there. But as Taylor was saying, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you guys greatly enjoyed this one. I hope you found it really interesting. And uh, let us know in the comments down below what you think about Ascent Chicago, the current metagame, Mitch's decklist and performance. And if you want to hear more from Mitch, I want to hear about that too. He's a, he's a, a wealth of information. We love having him on. So hope Very you guys much. enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. <laughs>